Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to preface this by saying that this presentation should take 20 minutes or so. Um, we'll have a question and answer time at the end, but if you think of anything after our time today is done, don't hesitate to send me or my team an email. Also, just a fair warning, uh, our service center here in Memphis is just a few miles north of the airport. So if at any time I have a longer pause, give me some grace as there's probably a 747 overhead. Uh, and with that, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Vanderhave and I'm a project engineer at Barnhart. My background is in mechanical engineering and I've been here in the engineering sales support group for a year and a half. For those of you who do not know, the engineering sales support team works directly with customers and our salesmen to develop technical plans during the pre-bid process. Today I'll be discussing the hydroelectric industry and some removal and replacement methods for common hydroelectric equipment. For the, pl the plan for today is to start out by discussing hydroelectric dams and how they work. We'll then transition to the hydroelectric industry and some things that Barnhart has noticed over the last year or so. Next, we will look at common hydro equipment that needs to be replaced and see common pitfalls when performing this work. Finally, we will discuss some hydroelectric projects that Barnhart has worked on over the years. So with that, let's get into it. For those of you that don't know, let's run through the process of making electricity a hydro dam. First, the powerhouse operator must open the control gate when the plant wants to produce electricity. The water then passes through the trash racks at the intake to prevent garbage from going through the powerhouse. The water then flows down the penstock until it hits the water runner or turbine, which is connected to the generator. The rotor of the generator turns with the turbine and creates electricity. The electricity moves to the transformer where its voltage is stepped up so that it can be transported to the grid. Meanwhile, the water flows out of the water runner and heads to the outtake. It may seem simple, but there are a lot of moving parts to this process. In the Department of Energy's January 2021 report, Barnhart was able to learn a few things regarding the hydro industry. The report stated that between the years 2010 and 2019, the U.S. has added 1,688 megawatts of hydropower to our grid. Not only this, but at the end of 2019, there were 217 projects planned in the U.S. alone, which would account for an additional 1,490 megawatts of hydropower production to be added to the grid in coming years. We also learned about pump storage hydropower, or PSH for short. PSH accounts for 93% of grid storage here in the U.S. Essentially, PSH utilizes available power during off-peak hours to pump water to an upper reservoir where there's a difference in potential energy. The water is then allowed to flow downhill through the turbines during peak hours to provide more reliable power during those most demanding hours. The DOE report showed that in the U.S., there are 52 gigawatts of PSH projects planned, and around the world, 50 gigawatts of PSH projects are currently under construction. The majority of these domestic projects are focused in the Southwest, specifically California and Arizona. Another key fact that we learned is that many of the hydropower facilities in the U.S. are older. In fact, between 2020 and 2029, there are 281 hydro locations in the U.S. that are up for relicensing. All of this to say, 
Barnhart has seen an uptick in hydroelectric opportunities over the last two years. In 2020, we saw a 58% increase in related opportunities as compared to the prior year, and in 2021, there was a 22% increase as compared to 2020. In Barnhart's many years performing hydroelectric work, we have seen that hydroelectric components deteriorate with the constant wear on them. When thinking of common hydroelectric components, water runners may be the first component that comes to mind. But the electrical components that actually generate the power from the water runner also wear out, such as the rotor and the stator. Water regulation components also wear down over time. Pictured here are gates, but trash racks and others often need to be removed and replaced. Other regulatory devices such as valves need to have bearings and seals replaced over their lifetime. Now that you have an idea of what needs to be replaced at hydroelectric facilities, let's take a look at common challenges when replacing this equipment. No matter the component, all hydroelectric equipment presents its own challenges when removing and replacing them. In this first picture, although it may not be immediately obvious, there are only a few inches of headroom above, above the winch. You can see just behind the black turnbuckles the structural beam that is just above the cable. Working in hydro plants often means working in confined and congested areas. This particular component, as you can see, is tucked away in the tightest of spaces. Notice the tight rigging needed to remove it. The component sits just below the forks of our cantilever system so as to avoid the pipe rack above. In this photo, you can see a butterfly valve at a dam with very little access. More importantly, how can you remove it? There doesn't seem to be anything apparent that we could rig to. There also doesn't seem to be anywhere to lift it from. Could we lift it from below, or should we add some lifting eyes to the top of the valve? Often, hydroelectric facilities are older. This presents more than a few challenges. For engineers, this can be one of the most exhausting problems. If you look very closely, you will see that this drawing was last revised in 1926. Things change in 100 years, especially in a facility that is constantly making power. This can present issues when circumstances do not allow an engineer or other company representative to visit site. Worst case scenario, documentation is missing or does not exist. So actually this drawing is pretty good. Another challenge that we often face is that hydroelectric facilities have poor site access. In this picture, we had to use a crane to bring our equipment to the top of the dam because we could not drive it there due to the limited truck access. Not only do you need to think about getting your heavy equipment to site, but you have to worry about how you will get your personnel to site. You may have also forgotten that you need a route for the piece that you're removing and replacing to travel. One final consideration is load support points. You might be tempted to think that since hydro dams are usually made of concrete, you would be able to support loads just about anywhere. Think again. There are many places at dams that are not reinforced with structural steel or do not have piers driven to support loads. Take this picture for example. The crane could not be set any more to the right than it is because of the void you can see underneath the parking lot. All of this to say, many projects that Barnhart works on doesn't just experience one of these challenges, but many or all of them. So with that, let's get into a couple remove and replace projects that we've done over the years. This first project was to remove and replace a water runner in Iowa. 
the job required that we clear the levy with the runner on our truck. This dictated that we needed to bring the runner in on its side. But once we got it in the facility, we need to turn it to set it in place since the water needs to flow over it in a vertical direction. We were told that others had unsuccessfully attempted to down end this water runner several years prior using gantries. It went poorly and almost ended in a lost load. This was the project that we designed the tip stick for. The tip stick utilizes an acme rod running through the body of the tool, moving the hook along its axial direction. This forces the water runner to turn so that its center of gravity stays under the hook of the crane. At this job in Arizona, our customer requested that we lift their stator shell, which weighed 200,000 pounds. They need to perform some maintenance below the stator, so we employed our pull-up gantries, or pugs for short. One of the huge advantages to using pugs here was that we can crib out the mouth of the pugs so that our customer could perform their work without being under suspended load. Also, notice the header beams in our gantry system. Those header beams are actually slide track beams. Although they weren't necessary for this job, sometimes it is advantageous to use slide beams as header beams, especially if you need to side shift your load. You can see the notches on the top of the beams that the dogs on the pusher gripper system grip. They also provide an excellent strength to weight ratio which allows you to support larger loads at bigger spans while reducing your overall ground bearing pressure. This next job took place in the early part of 2021 at Boone Lake. Our customer called us to inform us that their chiller at their dam had gone down and they couldn't operate their facility without it. In fact, they couldn't run their turbine because they had no way of cooling it. We were told that the chiller weighed no more than 4,000 pounds, but it was just beyond the reach of their gantry crane. We supplied our moving counterweight cantilever system, or MOX, to be rigged to their gantry crane to lift the chiller out of the hole. One of the big wins on this project was the total time it took from being made aware of our customer's emergency to being hook ready. We were called on a Friday and the following day, we were on site making the lift. Our mock system was the key to this solution because it is a pre-engineered out of the box solution, meaning that our experienced field team could assemble and operate it without having to, to design, fabricate, and engineer a custom system. Barnhart has a robust lineup of cantilever systems, including the mini mocks, standard mocks, and Megamox. This next project took place at the Horse Mesa Dam. You've already seen a few pictures of this tricky butterfly valve, but let's dive into the project a little bit more. The valve was clearly stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can see that demolition work needed to be done to actually remove it. But the trickiest part was getting the valve out of the building we had to install an overhead trolley system above the valve. To lift the system with the trolleys, we removed two of the bolts around the diameter of the valve and inserted a custom fabricated piece that we could hook onto. We then needed a way to transport the butterfly valve out of the powerhouse. So we utilized the soft track system. Perhaps what is most important about this system is the custom soft track car body that we built for this job. In the left picture, you can see the valve on the ground with the gray cylinders extending down between the channel that the tracks are in. This custom car body actually had hydraulic cylinders built into it, so we could lift the valve from below to clear the low ceiling. It was imperative that we keep the valve as low to the ground as possible because quite literally, we scraped the roof with the top of the valve as we were making our first turn. To add insult to injury, the site access was extremely limited. 
We had to use modular barges to transport our equipment up and down the river, as well as the new and old valves. That doesn't factor in getting personnel to site. In fact, you had two options, take a boat upriver a few miles or do some white knuckle driving on the side of mountains. If the last project required the most out of the box thinking of any of the projects in this presentation, then this next one might be the most cut and dry of the projects we will look at today. The scope of this work was to remove and replace four sluice gates at Table Rock Lake so that our customer could refurbish them. The plan was to take four years, removing one gate in the fall, refurbishing it in the winter, and reinstalling it again in the spring. The gates weighed 107,000 pounds. We removed them with a crane and set them in a reinforcement frame. But since the center of gravity of these gates sat 13 and a half feet above the deck of the trailer, we used double wide Goldhofer to transport them. This job required us to remove and replace the overhead trolley system at the Chief Joseph Dam. Their bridge crane on their turbine deck sat only a few inches below the nearest obstruction. This particular trolley system also did not have any lifting lugs on it. We designed and fabricated lugs, as well as this quad link to support the project. The center of gravity was also unknown, so we included turnbuckles on the quad link to allow adjustability in the rigging based on the final location of the center of gravity. A hole was cut in the roof where we could lower our crane hook through with long rigging. We then tensioned the trolley with the crane hook and then drove the bridge crane out of the way so we could lower the trolley system to the ground. Another consideration on this project was the weight of the boom caused increased axle loadings. So we had to transport the boom in a dolly to better spread the load until we arrived. This project, as you can see, was to load test this bridge crane. Although this may seem fairly easy, there are definitely a few considerations. Transporting that much counterweight onto a turbine deck at a hydro facility is not necessarily a simple task. Floor loadings and site access must be looked at extensively. Sometimes it is not feasible to get counterweight to a location so it would seem obvious to just use water bags to load test hydro equipment. But don't forget that it takes a long time to pump the needed water into bags for this type of load test. In other circumstances, it is possible for us to load test hydro equipment off-site, potentially at one of our equipment yards. No matter the application, we can provide load testing counterweight and frames, as well as the engineering support these load tests need at your hydroelectric facilities. And with that, I want to begin wrapping up this webinar. But first, I want to leave you with one more tool. Our engineering team is perhaps our greatest resource. Now, obviously, I am biased, but we are your problem solvers. If you have something you need help moving and you don't know where to begin, send us an email or give us a call. We love to begin working on complex problems during your early stages of a project so we can provide insight into how we can best support your project. We would love to sit down with our senior engineering team and discuss your project and the different options we perform the different options to perform the scope of work. And with that, we will conclude the presentation portion of this webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via email or type your question in the chat window, and I will try to answer them now. Thank you. Tim, thank you for the presentation. Um, one question that's coming in is, how do we determine whether the facility that we're supporting um, has the integrity, has the capacity to handle the loads we're putting down. Um, if, you, if you mind, I'll, I'll jump in and take that one. That's a great question. 
One of the things we do is we work with the engineers of the facility or we have um, a team of structural engineers that we can contract in and we'll work with them to find the load bearing points, the thickest concrete, um, the structural steel, and we'll determine the loads on our equipment and work with them to make sure that they're um, that the, the area can handle it. So it's an iterative process, but it's definitely part of our planning uh, phase. The other question is coming in is, could you explain how the pull-up gantries that you mentioned in one of your earlier slides work? Yeah, so the uh, pull-up gantries work, basically they have two cylinders in the side of the uh, of the actual frame, um, and they push up on the top of the gantry, um, and there's a mouth that we like to put our load through, um, and when you actually push up with the cylinders, you can crib out underneath it. So that's kind of just the uh, basic structure of the pull-up gantry. And Tim, it looks like that was, uh... That was the only question we had, so well done. Thank you for that. And everybody on the call, we really appreciate your time and look forward to uh, our next webinar together.